Ryzen's Aya Neo has a confirmed release date of March 2021, and unfortunately will be hitting the Chinese markets first. However, its release is a certainty, whereas the Alienware's UFOs is not, since it is still a concept. Though Alienware has put some considerable effort and money into developing this concept, so there's still a good chance it might come to fruition. But the question is, which one is better? Let's find out. First and foremost, the specs of each console are the most vital to understanding their capabilities. We don't know the full list of specifications for the Alienware UFO, but we have a basic idea enough to compare the two together. The Aya Neo is a powerhouse of a console, especially for its size. It's rocking a AMD Ryzen 5 4500U with six cores. Now that's no joke and will definitely suffice at giving you more than decent performance. I mean, if it's able to play Cyberpunk, then it's gotta be, hasn't it? It's also fitted with an AMD Radon Vega 6 and 16GB of DDR4 RAM, as well as having a 512GB SSD. So just for comparison purposes, that's 16 times the amount of SSD storage of the Nintendo Switch, and exactly 4 times the amount of RAM. But of course, the Neo is over twice the price. But the point is that it is a monstrously good console considering the tiny size of it. And speaking of size, the screen is, well, it's decent considering it's only 7 inches. So even if it does max out at standard definition, it won't really matter because you'd struggle to notice a difference if it were any higher resolution. Unfortunately, it is an LCD panel which means the colors may be slightly lacking to some degree. Then on the other hand, you have the Alienware UFO, which has an 8-inch Full HD display. So, already, the UFO has a bigger screen and resolution, but that does kind of cancel each other out, meaning relative to the size of the screens, will look about the same on both the Neo and the UFO. Alienware haven't said an awful lot about the full specs, but it is a larger console, so it's likely to be more powerful than the Neo. Of course, that does mean the UFO won't be as portable. The only thing they have hinted towards was the CPU, which we know will be some sort of 10th gen Intel, which if that's the case, then it would give the Neo a run for its money. But I wouldn't make any bets because it's a hard console to outperform. Alienware's UFO does one thing exceptionally well, of which we know of, and that is the battery life because it can last up to 9 hours compared to the Neo 6 hours. Looking at the functions of each console is interesting, because it's fairly clear they based a lot of their decisions off the failures and successes of the Nintendo Switch. The Neo has not just one, but three USB-C ports, which means you could connect it up to multiple screens at one time, which could make things very fun. It also has a 3.5mm audio jack, thankfully. Then the UFO, seemingly goes for a different approach, similar to that of the Switch, because it is believed that it makes use of some kind of docking system. Again, little is known about that in specific, but assuming the dock actually serves a purpose, like linking up to multiple screens or upscaling performance, then it has a massive advantage over the Neo. If the dock follows suit with the Switch's hunk of plastic, then the advantage, of course, would go to the Neo. The Switch's most trivial issue had to be its dysfunctional kickstand, which has been remedied on the UFO by placing the stand right across the bottom evenly, rather than on one side. The Neo doesn't have a kickstand, but neither does it have detachable Joy-Cons, so there's really no need for it anyway. And that's something that sets the two consoles apart massively. On one hand, you have the UFO, which takes after the Switch with many of the same but improved features. Then you have the Neo, which is a much more handheld designated experience with no dock or detachable controller. Each clearly has slightly separate uses which are going to appeal to different people. Now, by no means does this all mean you should ditch your Switch to move over to one of either of these new handhelds, because honestly, they're not going to be cheap. So unless you desperately need multiple handheld gaming consoles, then neither of them are worth it. But if you are in the market for a handheld, but you want to play PC games, then clearly the UFO or Neo are better in that regard. The Neo will likely be more oriented towards hardcore PC gamers who want to game on the go as well as on their PCs, whereas the UFO 
is more universally usable as an all-rounder, much like the Switch because of its docking system and detachable Joy-Cons. Anyway, what did you think? Let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe.